good morning and welcome so we have been talking about uhv3 and in the last module we are now on lecture 25 where we are looking at the science of work and the science of participation in the larger order so yesterday we talked about this and um we said that for the science of work there are some issues that have to be taken care of so what all do we have to work with for science of work what does it have to do with two issues are there one is when we work with nature we want one outcome to be prosperity in the human being the other outcome should also be preservation of nature because ultimately the prosperity of the human being is also dependent on the nature or preservation of it so these two are important so the science of work must deal with these two and in the prosperity we said first of all being able to identify how much is required how much of physical facility is required so for that we need the understanding to be able to see that the physical facility is useful for the body it doesn't do anything for the self so it is required in a limited quantity and we can identify that and work towards it secondly production by way of labor so having this mindset of working with nature in order to produce the physical facility that is important because if we don't have that then we are not going to be able to produce much while it's true that not everybody has to produce but how is supporting this production by way of labor for instance there are people who are involved in doing labor are we supporting those people or are we exploiting them are we trying to haggle with them or you know so if we want to take care of prosperity in ourselves and if we are able to identify our need we may be able to see that we already have sufficient so we can support those who are producing by way of labor at least not exploit them at least making sure that what they rightfully deserve they get then for working with nature we need to use cyclic and mutually enriching processes so that we are not exploiting nature not causing more problems in nature so those processes will come to it which are cyclic which are reusing whatever there is in nature so that it can be enriching for it rather than using um say artificial chemicals and things because we are trying to in a way have more crop or you know um getting more harvest from the soil but in the process if we are damaging the soil then ultimately we are destroying the fertility of the soil and then you know this cannot be ensured prosperity cannot be ensured so it is required to use cyclic and mutually enriching processes in nature at the same time in our behavior with the people who are involved in this process we should ensure justice for the people who are working with this <coughs> 
then right utilization of the physical facility we already have so are we doing that otherwise this need so called need for physical facility we may not be able to identify properly because we feel we need more and more and more and then eventually exchange and storage for mutual fulfillment storage we can see storing it in a way that it doesn't get harmed so there is a you know common saying in english either you use it or you lose it so this is true for many things either you use it properly or it's going to be wasted better to give it to somebody who can use it if not it will be gone it will be anyway wasted so storing it properly and exchange when we are exchanging <clears throat> say money for um whatever this physical facility we are getting then doing this in a manner that we are ensuring mutual fulfillment not trying to exploit the other so all of this are required and you will see that as you are able to see your own prosperity you can ensure all of these better and better so both are interconnected both are linked if you have the prosperity feeling of prosperity you will make sure that there is mutual fulfillment for or justice for the people who are involved in this whole process of production and exchange at the same time for having this feeling of prosperity we need to identify the need we need to have the right utilization and so on so the two are interconnected and ultimately preservation of nature is also required enriching protecting and rightly utilizing the nature so we said that this is the um, the issues to be dealt with when we talk of the science of work and yesterday in the group we had also given a short assignment um regarding this we asked that are you identifying your need for physical facility correctly and are you rightly utilizing the physical facility you already have these assignments are just for you know drawing your attention to these points because we may not be thinking about this we may be just busy with day to day activities without really putting a thought to these points so therefore just to draw your attention to it from time to time based on what we have talked about we put these assignments so if somebody would like to share about this quickly and then we'll move on or if anybody has any question regarding this we will talk a little bit more in detail about this but uh, anybody has any immediate question or an observation we'll take maybe one or two and then go forward so the present state of science of work so we have discussed partly these things earlier but these all these issues that we just talked about they should be taken care of when it comes to science of work so today are we taking care of these issues or not that is the question next slide we we'll look at this one by one yeah so today if we see first of all we said you know that when it comes to science we talk really only about the material world we kind of ignore the consciousness even in the material world 
when we talk of science of work, how much are we really talking about all these points which we said are significant and important? So when it comes to prosperity, identifying the need of physical facility, how much is required? In the whole process of education, I don't think there is any content that deals with this. We, at no point, at least in our educational system, have we been able to see this, that there is any stress on identifying how much of physical facility is required. So somewhere this assumption comes about that you just need, but you don't know how much you need. So you feel you need more and more. And society, education, everything is promoting more and more consumerism, more and more consumption. So it is but natural that children going through education have this mindset that they need maximization of, say, salary, the whole idea of getting a job at the end of education. In fact, the whole idea of having an education is to get a job with a high salary. And the higher the salary, the more we consider it being successful. <coughs> so in that case, when, it, when we are not identifying the need, then where is the question of prosperity? Because we will keep feeling we need more, we need more, we need more. Taken care of. At least this is how it seems. Of course, uh, this is, like I said, everything here is, it's a proposal. This is how it seems to be. But if you think to the contrary, you can reflect on it and see how it appears to you. So in this way, we can see that product prosperity in the human being, when it comes to identifying the need, that is certainly not being taken care of by science today, by our educational system today. If we look at production by way of labor, this is also not being promoted, neither in education nor in society, isn't it? Everybody wants a white collar job a job where they don't have to dirty their hands. They can put on their, you know, white collar job just means you have this shirt and tie kind of clothes, you wear your shoes and you go to work. You don't want to work with the nature. Or, you know, all the, the, the things that we promote in society also, which are leading to these preconditionings in everybody. When we talk of a successful person, what do we show in the TV ads, in whatever you see? You will see a person suited, booted, dressed, um, maybe with a briefcase, taking a flight or something like this. Do we ever also show success in terms of somebody who is working with nature. I don't think I have ever seen that. So you will see that we are promoting this in a way. Everybody wants that I shouldn't have to do it. I can manage and somebody else should work in my farm. If I have a big farm, I can do the managing part, but I don't want to dirty my hands. I can employ somebody else to do that job. So if everybody has this mindset in education, what's going to happen? So this you know, mindset of producing by way of labor, this is also not being helped or it is not being promoted in education or in society today. If you look at using cyclic and mutually enriching processes, and ensuring justice for the people involved in the process. Again, many of our production processes today are not cyclic. 
they are not mutually enriching. So obviously there is a problem. So if we don't take care of cyclic things in our production, or the, even you know when you see when we are um, growing anything, say you're on a farm, everything you will find in nature is such you can recycle it. So the cow dung can be recycled, the cow, dung, cow urine can be recycled in terms of if you put this cow urine, there is a preparation that you make with the basin, which is like uh, this. Uh, and um, some jaggery and the cow urine, all of this, like uh, you make it into a slurry or a liquid and then you put it in the fields where the plants are growing you will see they flourish this acts like a manure for the plants so nothing is really wasted like that everything is being utilized and it's a very it's a cyclic manner in which things are being used and reused so that it is enriching the soil and then you, we are the ones who reap the benefit in terms of the crop that we harvest. But when we don't understand this <coughs> and we use some you know, quick methods using chemicals as pesticides, as fertilizers, now not only does it make the soil infertile, it may give you a big crop for that time or maybe you know for two seasons or something like that and you might find that your crop is larger size and so you are feeling very good about it and you think that you have achieved something but in the process slowly you're damaging the soil making it less and less fertile and also this very crop is harming the human body because it's not good for the human being either. So these non-cyclic methods, they are not mutually enriching and in fact are harming. So they are not taking care of this problem either. Like as an example, you know, today, today we are, if we see, something like tomatoes <coughs> it's another story that now so much of rain and so much of flooding in the north and all of that there also if we look at it when we look at you know preservation of nature we have destroyed so many forests we have you know there is no place for soaking up of the water in the soil so what's going to happen this is going to flood the place. So there also, to a large extent, the human being becomes responsible in this whole mess. But when we don't see it and we don't understand it, we think, okay, in nature there is no harmony. Harmony is there in nature, but if we keep disturbing and exploiting, then somewhere the system will break down, isn't it? Somewhere you will see the disturbance because of it. And nothing, you know, nature can still survive with that. It will come back. But what is the most susceptible to um, extinction in all of this is the human being. Because we are so dependent on the nature. And if we don't see this, and we don't take care of these issues, then we are the ones who are suffering today. I was talking about tomatoes. Yes, they are very high priced right now. But if you look at tomatoes, you will find compared to the earlier days, in recent, maybe in the last 20 years or so, you might notice 
that you are able to buy tomatoes that look very red and nice you see but when you cut them up and you cook them sometimes they took take a long time to cook and the juiciness is not there the taste is not there so many things that uh, we can see uh, directly at this level in terms of even selecting tasting but at a deeper level of course it causes harm to the human body also so that is also something to consider so then there is no question of prosperity isn't it then if you talk about ensuring justice for the people who are involved in all this process where are we focusing we are focusing on management we are focusing on maximizing profit so we are talking about maximizing profit and of course we are not who are working so we tend to exploit them we pay a pittance for those who are them um, say helping with the harvest the farm hands who help with the harvest and so on so all this has to be taken care of because it is all um you know when we don't take care of uh, these issues we, we don't ensure justice for these people then and if we are exploiting them then more and more people are going to come out of this which is happening so more and more people are flocking from the villages from the agricultural background to the cities for so called better opportunity higher paying job better facilities and so on and we in the name of development we are doing all of this but is it really development then if we talk of right utilization again we are not taking care of this in our system in our whole process of education we are not really talking about rightly utilizing physical facilities i don't recall any lessons throughout school or college where we talk about this rather consumption to the extent of indulgence this is what is being promoted consume more and more indulge more and more that seems to be the mantra for um you know success so called success what we are identifying today in the society so it's like if you are consuming more the more cars you have that is like a status that you are successful today the bigger houses you have the more you are considered successful and so on but somewhere we have to look are we rightly utilizing what we already have then we might see we don't need that much more and if we look at exchange and storage for mutual fulfillment yes you tell you saying one time usage products to use and throw that has become the culture if you all may recall that um video on the short film on um story of stuff it's called about consumerism and how damaging it is what we are doing to nature so we are not promoting right utilization in any of this if we look at exchange and storage if we see yes we store things perhaps we try to safeguard them we also exchange but what is the motivation behind it is it mutual fulfillment or are we again looking at profit maximization and exploitation 
many a times people are hoarding things keeping more and more so that they can sell at higher price so that they can make more profit and so on so all of these things need to be considered we have to ma'am ma actually uh, that inconvenient truth um, one yes. video was inconvenient truth yes um, that um, but that is not currently available when i search for it for yeah. yeah what you can do is i think it is there on amazon prime or something like that it's not there on youtube now oh ha 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 you can look at um, Amazon Prime. In Amazon Prime or somewhere, it is there. One of these paid channels. Okay. 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 जी. Okay. But if that is even part of as part of material, it may make some confusion. It is there in the UHP two material, I think. Now. Ah, when it was put, the link. Um, it was available on YouTube. Now it is not available. Perhaps you know we should. It's a long movie, in fact. Uh -huh. It's a long one, uh, but the gist of it is this only: that we are not at all conscious of the problems that we are creating in nature, and how global warming and this ozone depletion and all of these are linked to our own behavior. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Ji, thank you. Okay. Um, we can go further now if you look at preservation of nature enrichment enriching nature is it our focus in our production today rather we are exploiting the nature that we can see you know the way we are farming and all we were just talking about that so we are willing to get more and more harvest try to maximize our harvest at the cost of the fertility of the soil at the cost of the quality of the soil and at the cost of the health of the human being also which is another part of the prosperity but you can see that this is not helping to enrich the soil at all enrich the nature at all if you look at protecting the nature now again we are protecting only to the extent that we can see in our very limited view in this immediate production that maybe we will get more production if we use fertilizer if we use pesticide so the other parts we are not seeing that this whatever we are putting in the soil it is destroying the soil not only the soil fertility all those harmful things now it is coming in the water it is whatever we are eating which is grown in that soil of course it is going to damage the human body also so for example the case of cancer in the bathinda district of punjab there has been a tremendous increase in the number of cancer cases there which was earlier not the case like we were saying earlier punjab was like the rice bowl of the country not just the rice bowl means for all the grains and everything it was a major was taking care of production for the whole country because the land was so fertile so much water was available and people had a mindset to work hard work hard labor now all that seems to have dwindled down mindset of labor is not there in the youth today there you see more of exploitation and um of course we are not taking care of the soil because again you know you can see that when we don't look at the big picture we see everything in isolation we think okay this is for something for us to maximize our gain from it 
but we don't see that in the process we are causing so much harm to ourselves not just with punjab you can see this everywhere in fact so we need to have that understanding we need to be able to see things holistically again when we talk of right utilization that doesn't seem to be a concern neither in the education nor in the society what we are promoting is over consumption this we already spoke about next slide yes a train to bikaner is called cancer train very true this is um because of all these high number of cases of cancer there unfortunately then if you look at the results of this obviously if we are not taking care of the preservation of nature then it is going to lead to it is bound to lead to resource depletion and um pollution we are creating so much pollution so resource depletion when we say what does it mean we are using up the resources at a rate which is faster than the rate which in which by which it can be produced in nature so everything we want quick 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 more 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 there is a book called slow is beautiful so you you'll notice that many things in nature it takes time but it is happening in a way in a very harmonious way where there is possibility of continuity but what we are doing today we want things to happen faster and faster because somewhere we want to maximize our profit from it so if we keep consuming faster and faster and faster and in nature it is not able to produce at that rate obviously there is going to be a depletion of resources then there is a question that resources are not enough but otherwise if you see in nature resources are far more the more than sufficient for everybody pollution what is pollution so when we are using methods which are non cyclic in this cycle in nature things are not being reused now it becomes a problem so this you know whatever product we are producing we are producing at a rate that is faster than the rate at which it can return to this cycle in nature so if you see plastics is a good example now if we use plastic wisely then it can be very useful for human beings but when we overdo it we are doing it at such a fast rate that it cannot get you know degraded in the soil now it creates a problem then you have these huge garbage dumps and you don't know what to do with them where are you going to throw it somebody goes and throws it in the sea but whatever you do it is on this earth you can't get away from that people move from their country and you know take it on a barge and put it on some other soil or some other sea but still it is part of the country you know i mean it is part of the world so it is going to end up damaging and if nature is getting damaged then everybody is affected so all this pollution so you can see both these problems are because of using processes that are either not cyclic or not mutually enriching so if we understand this if we see the harmony in nature if we see that we can solve these problems if we use cyclic mutually enriching processes then everything gets reused and in the process it is not only enriching the soil enriching the nature but it is also fulfilling for us enriching for us and ensuring our prosperity like we talked of natural farming yeah 
So if there's any immediate question on this, otherwise we'll keep going forward. Okay, I think it's pretty straightforward what we are talking. You can all see this. Next, we come to the science of participation. Science of participation in the larger order. So that we can have fulfillment of the human goal. So we had spoken of the five dimensions earlier in the introductory workshop. So we'll go over those a little bit again now to look at our own participation in each of these dimensions to see how we can fulfill the human goal. So you'll find that, you know, we all have some role to play. Perhaps not in every dimension, but depending on our skill, depending on our training, depending on whatever we have been you know, working with or having the skill from college, from our education, we can participate in any of these or more than one of these dimensions of the human order. So let's look at that. Next. So this slide also you're probably familiar with. We talk about it in society, harmony in society in the introductory workshop. So the four human goals that we talked about. Now these five dimensions, education, sanskar, health, sayam, production, work, justice, suraksha, exchange, storage. We'll talk of these briefly to see how they fulfill the human goal. So if you look at the dimension of education sanskar, so through the system of education and developing the right sanskar, it helps to have happiness in every individual. This first goal of right understanding and right feeling in every individual. So we are trying to accomplish that through education sanskar. If you look at health and sayam, sayam is the feeling of self-regulation. <coughs> that and production and work with nature. These two together take care of the second goal of prosperity in every family. And you can see a slightly shaded four. So if we do it in a rightful manner, we are also um, accomplishing the goal of coexistence with nature. So this is taken care of. Then if we look at three, justice. Justice in our behavior with other human beings. So when we do justice with other, with other human beings, we see relatedness with other human beings. Then we can have fearlessness, trust in society. Suraksha is preservation, preserving the nature. So again, that is to do with the fourth goal of coexistence in nature. And if we look at exchange and storage, again, this has to do with prosperity, proper exchange, accomplishing prosperity and at the same time also when there is prosperity there will be fearlessness in society because every family is prosperous so you're accomplishing that third goal also and of course rightful storage so these are those five dimensions <clears throat> ma'am the why that is uh, light shade and dark shade for the this is what i'm saying Oh. The dark shade is your, this is the main thing, the main goal it's working for, but indirectly it is also helping with the other goal. That shaded part is that indirectly it is helping. Like for instance, this we just talked of this exchange and storage. So okay. when we do that, there is prosperity in every family. But because there is prosperity in every family, then there will also be fearlessness in society. 
so indirectly this is helping for the third goal also that's yes. but earlier the instead of sayam and uh, sanyam and uh, suraksha uh, that uh, self regulation and uh, preservation was given so uh, now from now on we have to use these words no 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 nothing like that perhaps this is an older slide it is just that these were the words that are these are the words that are used in the you know, hindi terms okay um but we can use the english terms self regulation and preservation yeah so this also you are probably familiar with ultimately with the help of these five dimensions of the human order we want to work with um you know accomplishing these goals in a larger and larger and wider and wider area so that you can go from family supposing there are 10 members to a family if we are talking of a, you know in the traditional joint family system so maybe 10 members in a family now from this you know we go towards you know each family is coming together in a group which forms a family cluster so if there are 10 families there then you can see how it is multiplying from a family cluster to a village to a village cluster to a nation to a world family so through these five dimensions you can work this way and you will see that right now we are working with the system of education sanskar through these uhb workshops you know it is um bringing awareness about uh right understanding how to go about it all of that through the workshops and through education now more and more students more and more children can have this opportunity avail this opportunity of being able to at least be exposed to this as information and then they can decide as per their own exploration they will be able to see more and more but at least that opportunity is available so this is something that uh, can be done <coughs> it is doable you can see from this and it can go all the way up to the world family order and each of us has a role in this participation uh, in at least one of these dimensions we may be having a role some of us may be having a role in more than one dimension like for, i can say for myself with my training in medical education i can work with health so i am trying to work with health so that we can bring forward this holistic health in fact the book is ready and uh, even though the printing is taking some time but the digital part should be available very soon uh so that everybody can use that and uh, sort of um at least ensure their own health and look at health holistically because that is something that is a need today you can see for all similarly for all the dimensions wherever we have our skill we can participate in one or more than one dimension if you look at the participation in nature so if you see if we understand this that in nature there is an inherent harmony and we live according to this then we will facilitate this we will facilitate a, an environment so that the activities in nature are not disturbed at least we should not violate if we can't help so that is true for facilitating innateness facilitating the inheritance like we spoke of in the nature we will not spend much time on it but briefly in the physical order we said that we can facilitate its innateness facilitate its existence by ensuring a conducive environment and maintaining that environment so for instance as an example if we look at 
the Earth's constitution. Now we are seeing all this, you know, global warming and this and that. But at the same time, we are doing all kinds of activities with the Earth. We are mining. So in the process of mining, we are digging out mountains. We are cutting down forests. Now all this, if we are, if we just see how much is our requirement, and we stay with that. But we are not looking at the requirement. We are just digging more and more and more so that we can get more and more and more profit. But these, you know, you are disturbing the constitution of the earth. When you are digging up all these mountains deeper and deeper and deeper, what is the role of that? We don't know. So many of these, you know, ingredients in the earth, in the core of the earth, in the you know, deep down, the metals, there's so many things are there. They are able to, uh, one of the ways in which they are able to help is to maintain the temperature. So when we keep doing all this digging and digging and digging, you know, temperature maintenance may not happen properly. You can, that may be one contributory factor to the temperatures rising. Similarly, if we look at the bio order, if we can facilitate the growth you know, by creating a conducive environment and maintain the seed, then this continuity is possible and we'll be preserving it, the nature. But when we don't do that, when we don't understand that, then we don't preserve the seed and we use all these now newer and newer hybrid seeds, the traditional seeds may be getting lost. Then, you know, the what you create in terms of what is the fruit that comes, that will not have the same features as before, because now you have tampered with the seed. Or if you are not facilitating the growth, at least let us not violate these so that it can flourish, nature can flourish on its own the way it is. In the animal order, facilitating the care of the body by ensuring physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body. And at the level of the self to ensure the will of the animal to live and maintaining and ensuring its breed. This also we talked about like the breed of the cows. Today we are maximally using the Jersey cow and the milk from that is not so useful for the human body. But then this is not one of the traditional natural breeds, the indigenous breeds. So again, if we interfere with all this and if you see the will to live, Every animal, uh, you know, the self of every animal has a will to live. Now we are violating that when we are slaughtering them and all of that. So we need to be aware of this harmony in nature and then live accordingly. In the human order, one is at the level of the body facilitating the care of the body by ensuring physical facility and environment for existence and growth of the body and facilitating the will to live with continuous happiness. How do we do that? By ensuring human education and sanskar. So we can start from within our family, seeing our participation within our immediate family, and then expand this circle of the family to larger and larger and larger areas, till we are able to see no boundary, till we are able to see our participation uh, going all the way up to undivided society and universal human order. Now, undivided society and universal human order will happen when it will happen. But our participation, we can start seeing from now. Not that we, you know, we may have this thing that how can I participate for universal human order? I'm sitting here. But we can start with our immediate family and then increase this, expand this circle and our participation will grow.
So we talked of some of these, you know, feelings that one can have within some of those uh, characteristics that are there in us when we are living with human consciousness and when we are participating in the larger order. So one was perseverance. So when we see the harmony in nature, then we have this commitment for living in harmony at all the four levels with patience. We don't get impatient with things. We are, we continue to persevere. We continue to uh, see the harmony and try to live in harmony at all these four levels. That is perseverance. There was a question last time when we brought up this, is it brevity or bravery? So if you see in Hindi, we call it virta. So even though initially we may have written the words bravity, but you can think of it as bravery. Bravery, the commitment for living, for helping the other to understand harmony and to live in harmony at all four levels. So not just commitment for myself, but committing to help others also understand harmony and live in harmony. That is bravery. And generosity. So then we are committing to, you know, investing our, not only ourselves but also the body and whatever physical facility we have for understanding and living in harmony at all the four levels. That would be generosity. Then we also spoke of kindness, beneficence, and compassion, the feelings we can have when we have human consciousness. Kindness is when somebody has you know, the competence, the ability, but they don't have the means to work for understanding. So we provide the means. If you look at beneficence, Somebody who has means, but they don't have the competence, they may not see the need for the competence. So we help them to develop the competence so that they can use their means properly. That is beneficence. Compassion is total, I mean, helping the other to develop the competence as well as the means. They may have neither the competence, nor the means, nor do they see it as a need. But we are willing to help unconditionally, regardless of whatever their behavior is. This is compassion. 